Welcome back to the 2018 Golf Industry Show here in a little bit brisk San Antonio this morning. They had the 5K run. Were you participating in the 5K run? I was not participating, <laughs> but I was pleased to watch the tweets from that dark, cold morning here in South Texas at the 2018 Golf Industry Show. We're live, brought to you by Lebanon Turf, and we've got another exciting discussion here. We just had a lo very lively discussion about the first tee. Now we're talking about the Quail Institute Fellows. We've got an agronomy fellow and a club fellow with us, coordinating this from Colt McKenzie McNair, Mike Kelly, this is a partnership between John Deere and Quail Hollow Country Club started by Tom Delosia and John Deere Company. What an exciting thing. Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, just the way you said it, it was a collaboration early on between the two companies and the club. And the uh, idea really is to help develop future leaders in our business. So with the idea of taking a golf professional, a superintendent, and a club manager, with the help of all the three major associations, which are all engaged with us in helping, um, the idea is to take young, bright, young stars in the business, run them through a one-year program where they get exposure to all fame, four major championships. They get to go to all three shows. They've already been to the PGA show. Whoa, wait. So I, I thought they were parked in Charlotte learning no. about the Quail Hollow operation. No, we're, we're taking, we've, they've been to the PGA show. They're here at GIS. They'll be in San Francisco next month at the... That's quite a circus, the PGA show. Right. You the, get those, all those sweater folders. They, they will get to visit all three of those association headquarters. Yeah, um, we're collaborating with some of the big management companies to that let them see what happens in the real world. So there's world. significant funding involved here. There is. To, to yeah. travel around and house, house these right. two young people, and we're going to chat with them in a minute, but bef what about the future of this thing? Looks like it's going pretty good. How long has it been going on, and what do you think's next? Really, the curriculum was written last year, and then we, these two young, bright, shining Inaugural stars. Inaugural fellows. These two fellows joined us. Uh, about the middle of last year, Russell was there a little bit prior to that, and then they, they're our first test case, right? So they're they're helping us be guinea pigs and giving us great feedback That's along right. the and way. Because you're, you're expecting a third. But yeah, we're expecting a golf professional to join the fellows. Our, th these two will graduate, if you will, from the program in May, uh -huh. and then we'll bring in three new fellows in July of this coming year. They'll Excellent. they'll launch that at the Excellent. John Deere Classic. Great. So, oh, and of course, John Deere involved in the PGA Tour as well. Quail Hollow, of course, involved in the Tour. The wonderful PGA Championship. I don't want to play that 18th hole. It looks <laughs> like it's a little creek, but every ball seems to fall into it. It's they don't call it. There's some nasty name for that hole, isn't it? What do they call that hole? Well, the the collection of the Green Mile is the obviously Green very, Mile. Is, that's is what is they very call famous. It. All yeah. right. So let's talk to the inaugural fellows, Rachel Nesbitt from good old Rochester, New York, studied at the University of South Carolina. You're the club fellow working with Tom Delosia. Uh, Russell Ambrose, you're working with Keith Wood, the golf superintendent at Quail Hollow. Let's start with you. Oh, and a Tennessee boy, trained in Tennessee political science, but finished off at Horry Georgetown by the madman himself, Charlie Granger, right. right, who I got to know a little bit through the Hazeltine mm -hmm. Ryder Cup a few years ago. You guys have been going to tournaments. I got to go through what the best part of the job is. I think I might have already stumbled into it. Rachel, tell me about your experience so far at the Institute, and what made you interested in it? Yeah, it's been awesome just being able to <clears throat> understand what happens in the club at all facets of the club, huh. knowing, you know, I'm focused in the clubhouse, but understanding what happens with the agronomy and understanding what happens uh -huh. in the golf side of everything, it's really a great chance to, to get a whole view of the club. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, it, it's important. Let me tell you, as somebody on the grass side, when I hear a clubhouse person say, I want to learn about what's going on in the golf course. Now, we don't need you helping us manage the golf course. Right. We need an appreciation of the rigors involved. And we need to appreciate, when I make the joke, uh, sweater folders, <laughs> these are real professional people trained in customer service, trained in food and beverage management. You were a hospitality major at South Carolina. You heard about this. What's been, let's get to the best part of the program so far. Has it been traveling around? I would say yes, just being exposed to everything in the industry, um, being at the PGA show, being here, mm -hmm. I don't think this is an opportunity that everyone in my position gets to do right, right away. Right. 
Uh, so just being able to understand the challenges through these industry right. shows and through and the sitting. size of them. Yeah, I mean yeah. these are these, I mean these are big industries oh, yeah. and there's a variety of career opportunities that you're afforded and we've segmented them out as club and agronomy and pro right. but there's a bit of fluidity between and there certainly has to be that that mutual understanding so let's get to Russell a little bit we're going to come back to you and finish out the dream job and all that other stuff but I want to hear from you a little bit about why did you think about applying working with Keith I know from the turf end probably because they were having the PGA championship yeah so Keith, uh, I volunteered for the 2016 Wells Fargo and I saw the mentorship that the assistants and Keith provided during that. I was like, man, I got to try That's to really get a good. job at this yeah. place. Uh, so good, very good. The mentorship through the program is amazing with Colt McKenzie McNair and the John Deere people yeah. and Keith and the assistants. That's been the best part. Yeah, I mean, so I far. think this is the rewarding side for the people involved in it, knowing that the time they spend is spent you know, mentoring young people that are looking for opportunities to come into an industry. And listen, we're not going anywhere. We don't encourage young people to get in the industry. We, labor is a big issue. Management and labor and even having to be bilingual, multilingual, there's a very important part of this business mm -hmm. that we need to keep attracting young people into it. So you got inst interested because you saw firsthand what was happening. What's been the best part so far? Well, like Rachel was saying, the multidisciplinary training throughout the club and becoming, getting to know people at the club better, yeah. GIS show, uh, PGA show, and that education was phenomenal down Had there. Had you PGA been to show. this before? Yes, this is my second trip down So here. you've been here before. Had you been to the PGA show before? No, I haven't been to either um, here or even CMAA yet, so I'm excited to have Oh, right, the Club Managers right. Association of America, yet yeah, a very, a, again, a, a longtime partner w with the GCSA on a variety of different right. things. Um, do you get involved with the, are the club managers uh, involved in this in any way? They are, actually. All three associations have been very supportive uh, at, at each of the shows that they host uh, in allowing some preferred access and allowing us to get these fellows exposed to things that, you know, some people in their career, I've been doing this a long time, I hadn't been had the chance to do. Getting to go visit all three of their headquarters. I mean, how many people have really done that? Especially when they're in the 20s, right? Yeah, so we're yeah. trying to take bright young stars and project them forward right. into great career paths right. in our industry and how help How competitive was it? It's going to be very competitive, as you might expect. Uh, as yeah, people have learned imagine. a little bit about this, um, we expect to draw the brightest young stars in the business. Well, all three and I tell you, the, you know, jobs open up, and certainly in our line of work, I'm not sure exactly what happens in the in the club management world. A job open ups, there's 200 resumes sometimes. Mm -hmm. So these kinds of things that set you apart, because a lot of people have major tournaments on their resume nowadays of yep. volunteering and things like that. So let's get to the challenging part of this, right? So it all wasn't all fun and games. You obviously went through the application process, and you're showing up for work every day. Challenging parts for you. I think for me, just stepping out and taking that, that management role head on, um, having a chance to, in this case, make some mistakes and have mentors right there to say, this is what you could have done better. Mm -hmm. um, and just learning the, the people. Yeah, just learning the people side of the business has mm -hmm. been, I think, challenges, but I've had the opportunity to, to grow That's through right. this, yeah. this program. That's and, right, and, and I imagine if it's run as a program, when you design the curriculum, as we do, you know, at universities, you know, right. feedback oftentimes is only considered a grade. Oh, you know, you work hard, you get you get grades for things. But in these environments, in the working world, they, they don't show up. Well, you got to be today. No. You, you don't get graded in the world. Where you're either doing your job really good, or you're sort of not doing your job really good. Right. And 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 so I think it is important for young people, especially, to be able to receive that feedback. But it can be challenging, right? Right. right? I mean, I know what it's like trying to get give my 17-year-old feedback, <laughs> and that doesn't always go over so well. So I think that always is going to be a challenging part. What about you? Uh, Keith really challenged me to learn the management style. Uh, so I sit in on the morning meetings every morning and lead groups every day. And yeah. that's been something, holding people accountable, learning my management style, all those kinds of things. That's been. Yeah, so and I imagine it's got to be tricky for you. It's not like you look like you're 40 years old telling, <laughs> no. managing operations, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know Keith, Keith Wood at all. I don't you sort of know what, it, what his experience, but obviously he's got a job at one of the great golf courses in the, in the world, the United States for sure, uh, certainly gets on television a fair amount, and that provides its own pressure. And when they're on television, that means there's profile in the clubhouse as well. So obviously there's, there's a lot of challenges to manage, especially, I can tell you, when I started out and I shooting my mouth off like I have been known to do on occasion, 
uh, sometimes they don't like hearing it from people who, you know, don't have the gray hairs. You get a little gray hair, all of a sudden they start giving you awards. Wow, he must know what he's talking about now. This had to be a big challenge. Was there one where, you know, you tried something, you got some feedback from Keith, you'd do it different? Yeah, there's so It's an there, interview, I'm interviewing. Yeah, so there was, a, there was a time during the PGA Championship where we are setting up equipment for 140 volunteers and you know how that can be. Ooh, so man. it was me and the interns running that and we bounced off different things and one night we'd be there an hour and a half, we're like, oh, we can't do this anymore. So we changed some things, talked with Keith, put the interns in charge, and I just kind of monitored that exactly. instead of me trying to run yeah, the show. That's right. And this has got to be music to your ears, designing the curriculum. You want to take a minute? What kind of a curriculum? Well, it, it's, it's really something that we've structured. We literally did a 365 day curriculum showing how we would like to map it out. As you might expect in year one, there's a lot of you know, invitations we're making to various organizations. We're going to get the universities involved. We haven't taken that step yet, but so we have, we have goals of exactly what we want to do, as you might expect, through leadership, on the job training, getting to see a lot of different things, understanding volunteering, right, right, right. Um, and, and getting them exposed to the industry in a way that's very unique. That's and right. We're, li we're learning, they're giving us feedback after each show, that's they right. have to write us a report. That's right, that's you know, right. Back to your grading kind of yeah, comment. Yeah, that's right, that's right. They're, they're, it's a lot hard work for them, plus they have responsibilities at the club, so they I mean they that's have exactly a regular right. job that's that they correct. have to do, and we're, we're pulling them out on a regular basis to get yeah. them the exposure like you see that's here. Right. And so. even more responsibility being the inaugural ones, right? That's and, right? And feedback to the people doing the program is critical, but we did mention it's likely to be competitive. Maybe there's one person listening out there or wandering around the trade show floor, you could could give some advice to? What would you tell somebody from your line of work how to be a competitive candidate for this, uh, for this, for this uh, really wonderful opportunity? Yeah, I think to have club experience going into this, um, Quail Hollow is a great place, but to start off, that might be a little overwhelming and to be exposed to all this right away, but I had a, the fortunate opportunity to have a lot of summer internships at clubs, and I think being able to compare and contrast those other clubs really helped in this position and being able to say, this is what I've done at other clubs, it was successful, how can we try and implement something like that here? That's great, so, so, so you must have done internships during your college career. Correct, every uh, so summer, yeah. There's the first piece of advice to the students. Yes. Do yes. an internship before you get out of college. And I right. think it's pretty standard practice for any student that identifies what they want to do. Right. To, you know, you can play around freshman year, summer, or maybe even sophomore year. Not in the grass business, but <laughs> you, you can play around. But but eventually, you you got to be working in this thing so you can apply those skills. Right. Advice from you. I would go ahead and start searching for your mentors right away in college. That's what really helped me with my internships. And those guys knew Keith. And I would document everything that you do during your internships. Exactly. Go ahead and start your portfolio that way. Okay, so obviously the answer to this question is, the answer to the what do you hope to get out of this, with mom and dad watching, by the way, while you might or might not still be on the dole, is a job. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, what do you hope to get out of this? Because you got a job. I do, yes. What are you doing? Um, I'm going to be a food and beverage manager um, at Myers Park Country Club in Charlotte. So Excellent. working for congratulations, yes. mom and dad are very happy about <laughs> yes. that. So what else, though? You you know you talked about these rich experiences that you've had. What else do you hope to get out of it? I think it's just interesting to know how many different avenues there are in the golf industry. I think being exposed to some of those positions, we've talked to people um, at these shows and just understanding they might have started out at a country club and then kind of worked their way into developing courses or renovating clubhouses Perfect. or just, there's so many different ways you can go that being exposed to it through this program was, was so perfect. So you got a lot out of that? Yes. All right, make sure you give them the feedback though. <laughs> yes. What about you? Uh, I'd like to Job echo, is coming. Yeah, so this I would, is going to help. I would like to echo what she said. a lot of exposure said. to the three people watching. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'd like to echo what she said with the different avenues that have been exposed to us through the golf industry. I mean, yeah. you know, you got designing courses, the corporate side of things, and that's kind of what I've gotten. Yeah, I mean, not everybody grows grass. John Deere mm -hmm. needs people working in John Deere that, that understand the grass side of the business, right? So there's lots of opportunities moving forward. What's next for you guys? Well, as we, we're finishing strong. They're with, going to tell you what they've learned. Absolutely, and so we want to finish strong with them between now and May, so we've got a pretty full agenda where we're trying to get them around to a number of different locations, including the Masters. Uh, we're getting them out to some of the management companies, uh, all to all major association headquarters, so it's a busy travel time for them between now and May while they continue to do their work. And then, you know, part of our responsibility 
at Colt McKenzie McDare, given our search side of it, is to make sure that they get placed in the right positions. Right. You know, how they succeed in their career will be the initial test for the success of the program, really. And, and it's about preparing future leaders. And then our next step will be, we're going to be recruiting new fellows into the program. We, we again, hope to start them in July. Uh, it's their paid positions, there's free housing. There. Information on the Quail Institute to apply for this, quickly. They can, uh, they can contact me at uh, mkelly at coltmm.com. Well, there's your email, but even at the thing, they can stop at the booth? That we, we, they can right? absolutely, they can, they can get us on the contact website. Contact us, You're look right. this up. That's right. Uh, John Deere needs big kudos for this. The commitment They're underwriting from Quail the whole Hall, thing. Country That's Club, right. a big commitment. Keith Wood, Tom Delosia, the guys working with you. Congratulations to you Thank two. You. Mom and Dad, they survived <laughs> 15 <laughs> minutes with me. Yeah. You do not want to miss our next segment with Dan Dinelli, and he is going to see, we're going to see a video of Dan's work right before we come back. This is GCSA TV Live at the 2018 Golf Industry Show. I'm Frank Rossi. This is all brought to us by Lebanon Turf.